Shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How are they going to believe in him whom they have not heard? How will they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach? Except they be sent. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. And bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. With the help of the Holy Spirit tonight, I just want to preach for a moment or two upon the thought of of the unsung heroes. The unsung heroes. Help me pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you once again. As I always do, I am in desperate need of your anointing. Lord, I have no speaking gifts, talent gifts that can help me be a pastor or preacher or even a deliverer of your word in all simplicity. But, but Lord, with you I can do all things. Help me, Lord, to deliver this word as you have placed it upon my heart. And Father God, I ask you that everyone here would be affected with this word and encouraged with this word just as this word has done in my own life. Lord, I ask you to have your way tonight. In Jesus' name, and everybody said. Amen. 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 The unsung heroes. The unsung heroes. How many of you in here have ever heard of a man by the name of Matthew Light? Nobody? Okay. How many of you in here have ever heard of a man by the name of Logan Mankins? Once again, nobody's ever heard of of those two guys. Here's another question. How many in here have ever heard of a man by the name of Tom Brady? The quarterback for the New England Patriots. <laughs> I'm trying to help you all out. All right, some of us heard about him. And if you don't, I'm sorry that you're a nerd. And, uh, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My mom, she don't have a clue who Tom Brady is. <laughs> and she could care less. <laughs> well, the reason you have heard, though, of Tom Brady is because of people like Matthew Light and Logan Mankins. 
You see, Matt Wright and Logan Mankins are some of Tom Brady's offensive linemen who have helped block opposing defenses from tackling their star quarterback. You see, Matt Light may have never had his name shining in bright lights on Monday Night Football. Logan Mankins may have never sold one football jersey while being in the NFL. But the truth of the matter is this. Without those two unsung heroes, Tom Brady doesn't have ten Super Bowl appearances along with seven Super Bowl rings. Tom Brady's success is only determined by how well his unsung heroes block for him. Amen. Unsung heroes aren't noticed much by man. Unsung heroes aren't really celebrated or recognized by those around them. But without the unsung hero, there are many accomplishments that would never take place. And just as there are unsung heroes in the sports world, on the job, and even in the family, there are a lot of unsung heroes in the church world. Yeah, they may go unrecognized, they may go unnoticed from time to time, but the unsung hero plays a vital role in the kingdom of God. Listen, you may not be a pastor like me, but the role God has given you to fulfill is just as important as the calling that God has placed upon my life. You may not be a deacon or, or a youth pastor or, or a missionary or an evangelist uh, as far as a, as a uh, profession, if you will, a full time, if you will. But that doesn't change the fact that you are equally important in the kingdom of God. How many know we are all needed tonight? Amen. Say, I am needed tonight. I'm needed. We are necessary. And all of us are important. And you may feel like an unsung hero, but you are equally important in the kingdom of God. Unsung heroes go unrecognized down here, but they do not go unrecognized up there. For Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 4 that what we do in secret, our Father up in heaven will reward us openly. God sees the finances that you give. God hears the prayers that you pray. God sees the gifts, the talents, and the abilities, and the different times that you give Him as your service unto the Lord. And there is a great heavenly crown that awaits the unsung hero. One day, can you say amen? Thank God for unsung heroes. Nobody talks about them. Nobody knows what they do, but yet they are doing something in the kingdom of God. How many of you in here tonight know of the person that got communion prepared for everybody? Hannah was like, I've got to scratch my head. <laughs> you know who it was? It was my son, Josiah. Amen. Little Joe, he got that syringe full of the grape juice and, and just started dropping it in all those communion cups. Nobody knew what he did, Brother Ray. Nobody really cared what he was doing before church except for me and his mama. But you see, he's an unsung hero. Nobody noticed him. Nobody recognized him. But God up in heaven was looking down and saying, look at my child get communion prepared. Can you lift up your hands tonight and say, Lord, it's not at all about being seen. It's about see being seen by you and not by man. Praise the Lord. The unsung heroes. Number one, I'm going to tell you that unsung heroes bring people to church. Oh, come on, church. Unsung heroes bring people to church. Last Sunday night, Brother Rick preached just a wonderful message about uh, how Peter and John were walking into the church. And on their way in there, they saw a lame man uh, sitting down out the gate. Beautiful. We all know how the story goes. Peter said to the lame man, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give
give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The scripture says that immediately the lame man received strength in his ankles and he stood up. He started dancing around. He started leaping. That boy was so excited that God healed him that he ran up into the temple and started shouting what the Lord had done for him. And thank God for that wonderful story and testimony. But I want you to know this. Without a certain unsung hero, that miracle that we just heard about would have never taken place in that lame man's life. Yes, we know what Peter did, don't we? We know what John did, don't we? We know what God did for the lame man, don't we? But I want you to know that if a certain unsung hero never decided to pick that lame man up for church and to bring him to the gate of the temple, there would have never have been a miracle that would have taken place in his life. You see, unsung heroes bring people to the house of the Lord. On Sunday morning, Sister Edna invited her sister-in-law, Joanne, to church. And she's here again tonight, looking pretty as ever. Amen. Well, Sister Edna invited Joanne to church. And sure enough, after the preaching was done, we started singing and worshiping the Lord. All of a sudden, Sister Joanne gets out of her seat. And she runs and she kneels here at this step. And she begins to weep in the presence of God. Just rededicated her life back to Jesus. But you see, the only reason that miracle of salvation took place is because an unsung hero named Edna invited her sister-in-law into the house of the Lord. You see, church, you think, well, if I can be recognized, that'll be great. No, no, no. No, God says you need to quit worrying about what man, how man sees you and start worrying about being seen by me. Can you lift up your hands and say, Lord, make me an unsung hero. I'm not in this thing for the applause of man. I'm in this thing for the applause of Jesus Christ. Can you say, amen. Growing up, Brother Dave lived in Right next door to me, the brother that sings up here on Sunday mornings. You say, why is he here tonight? He's playing video games. That's what he's doing. <laughs> That's just the way Dave's always been. <laughs> That's what Marlene was doing on Sunday nights. You playing video games. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but Brother Dave, he lived next door to me growing up. Well, what do preachers that live next door to people do? Invite them to church, brother, right? Not only did Dave come, but his brother Santos came, his sister Shauna came, his sister Tanya came, and whoever else was around. Amen. We had a five-seater 1993 Oldsmobile, but we fitted about eight or nine people in that little car on the way to church. I remember mom praying, Lord, don't let us get pulled over tonight. Well, sure enough, nobody ever gave mom gas. I mean, yeah, he did live next door, but never, nobody, parents never gave them gas to help bring the kids to church. Nobody ever ever said thank you for bringing my kids to church. Nobody from the church ever even noticed that mom's bringing all these extra kids into church. But you know what? The most important thing was this. God noticed it and Brother Dave is still serving God today because of an unsung hero named Brenda Glasgow that decided to bring the neighbor kid next door to church. Brother Ray, don't ever think that you bring your little kids to church that their parents don't go don't ever think it's a waste. God sees it. God knows it. And God's going to honor it. Amen. Oh, sometimes we plant seeds. and uh, But the Bible says uh, some plant, uh, some water. But it's God that gives the increase. Oh, for years, uh, Brother Wayne and Sister Diane would bring Melrose and Marlene to church. 
And I remember one time, uh, Sister Marlene said that she was uh, standing in church worshiping God and she had a very bad pain in her neck. She said, suddenly a big warm hand came and it touched her neck. And she thought my brother Aaron had showed up and touched her neck. Well, we went back on YouTube. What nobody come in there. It was just God. He come in and touched her neck. But you know why she received that miracle healing that night? It's because two unsung heroes named Wayne and Diane decided to pick those two ladies up for church. Every miracle that takes place in your life and in your life right now is a result of that unsung hero right there bringing you to church. Can you lift up your hands tonight, church? I'm telling you, there's some heavenly crowns that await us. And one day we're going to get these crowns and we ain't going to go and dance around saying, look at all I've done. We're going to get these crowns. We're going to cast them at the feet of Jesus and say, you are worthy of all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. I'm talking about unsung heroes. Can you say Amen. Unsung heroes. On Sunday morning, I went and picked up Brother Louie for church because I want to be an unsung hero. After church, though, Brother Ray took Louie home because he said, Pastor, you're not going to be the only unsung hero. I'm going to be an unsung hero, too. Ray took uh, Louie home. Tonight, I was about to go get Brother Louie. Brother Jake called pastor, I'll go get Brother Louie. Why? Because somebody wants to be an unsung hero. Oh, son, a lot of times after church, Sister Lena will bring home Edna. And I know we all kind of bring people and do different taxi stuff here. But that's what we're called to do. We're called to be unsung heroes. Where does it say that in the Bible? Let me remind you what Jesus said in Luke 14, 23. He told us to go out to the highways and the hedges and to compel them to come in that my house might be filled. The unsung heroes bring people to church. Can you say? Amen. Amen. Say, I'm an unsung hero. Amen. I'm an unsung hero. Not only do unsung heroes bring people to church, unsung heroes financially support the work of God. Amen. Hello. Unsung heroes financially support the work of God. And before we move on, Holy Ghost just brought it back to my mind. I, I saw Sister Glenda. I remember those a lot of times you would bring Lorraine to church over the years. <laughs> How do you forget that? Huh? <laughs> she was. She was very funny. Especially the time whenever. I don't know if I just. I'm already too far into it now. We're driving down the road on the way to church. Me. I looked at the kids and they're all just like, oh. <laughs> it was Lorraine. <laughs> so uh, it didn't matter that it was freezing outside. We just rolled the window and woo, it's hot outside today. <laughs> oh, but we were just being uh, some unsung heroes. Oh, and God sees everything that you do for Him, everything that you do for Jesus, God takes it. And into account. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. I believe when we get to heaven, there'll be some rewards that we think we're going to get. We may not get them because we were doing it for the wrong motives. I believe that. Right. But there's going to be other things. God's going to say, here's a crown right here. Remember that trash that you saw on the side of the church? Hello? And you decided to pick it all up? Put it into a bag so that the pastor didn't have to do it. Hello. Talk about an unsung hero. Do you remember when a toilet was clogged and you unclogged it? Amen. Do you remember when you painted the church? Do you remember when you took out the trash? Do you remember when you vacuumed the church? I'm talking about an unsung hero. Not noticed by man. But noticed by God. Hallelujah. So unsung heroes, yes, they bring people to church. And they also financially support the work of God. If it wasn't for the financial support that you give, this church would not be here. That's the truth. I thank God for all those that 
are faithful in their giving unto the work of God, tithes, offerings, Hallelujah. seed, above giving, praise your Lord. Thank God for that. But we've also been blessed with a lot of people that give that you don't even know. They are unsung heroes. And they are not here. So I can brag about all I want and they wouldn't get embarrassed. Most of you in here have never heard of Mike and Debbie Scott from Hockley, Texas. If you know them, lift your hand up. Okay, Lamont group. <laughs> you know her, Brother Rick? I know her. Oh, you know her? Okay, all right. Yeah. Every single month, they send a check of their ties to this church to help support it. I've never met her one time of my life. Not at all. Marlene's good friends with them and talks with them. But I've never met them face to face. They've never sat in a church service. I've never laid my hands on them and prayed for them. Nothing like that. No relationship other than maybe on Facebook every now and then. Just liking a post or back and forth or whatever. But yet every month, those unsung heroes financially support this church. Amen. Haven't you ever heard of a man by the name of James Caves? You, Glenda? Well, there's probably a few James Caves. My grandpa? Oh, you've heard of him. He's popular. <laughs> a couple of you have heard of him. Did you know that right after we started the church on Baker Street, he decided to send $50 to this church every single month, no matter what. It always happens like after the 20th or something. <laughs> I always know a check from grandpa's showing up. Well, then once we moved over here, he increased that check from just $50 a month to $100 every single month. That's $1,200 a year. He don't go to this church. He has his own church that he goes to, his own church that he gives to, his own church that he tithes to, but yet he willingly gives to this church, not just because I'm his grandson, but because he believes in the work of God and the word of God that goes forth from this house. And some heroes financially support the kingdom of God. The Seventh Standard Church. Did you know they take up a penny march once a month for us? Amen. Praise the Lord for that. One time, I got a penny march and a check from dad. It was like, it was like 700 bucks. And I said, whoa, that's a lot of pennies, dad. Dad said, yeah, the ties went down that week. Somebody gave the ties to it. <laughs> So that come out of his mind. <laughs> Did he ever talk to him about it? No. <laughs> but I think Derek or Aaron ended up with it now. <laughs> talk about unsung heroes. You don't know them. You never see them, but yet they're financially supporting the work of God. Well, yes, even this church, yes, some take up a penny march for us, but we do the same. You know why? Because we believe in giving. Whether we're supporting Pressy, our compassion child, whether we're giving to Pastor John John in Pakistan, whether we're giving to Brother Patrick in Uganda, or the youth program that's going on downstairs, we willingly give because we believe yeah. in the message that they are bringing yeah. forth. Can you say amen? Yeah. Yeah. Being an unsung hero. It's not about being seen. Come on. It's about loving Jesus, amen. loving his work. Can you say amen? amen? Why do I give? Why do I give? You know, some of these preachers on TV, if you'll give right now, God will give you. If you'll give a seed. Wait, wait, hold on. Hold on. Psalm 101. That means there's 101 people out there supposed to send me a million dollars. <laughs> and if the Lord's dealing with your heart, that was him. Just... <laughs> Mike Murdoch called me from <laughs> Sometimes, Brother Rick, 
we'll call each other and I'll call him and I'll, I'll say, hello, is this Peter Popoff's ministry? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm wondering where my miracle water is. Right. He'll call me back and, is this Creflo Dollar? You know, I, I, I'm just wondering where my money is. You know, I've been giving my seed to you and, you know, just, just joking around and stuff like that. <laughs> But I believe in giving. Yes, I do. Amen. I believe in giving. How did I have that eight hundred dollars to pay for the garage door to get repaired this afternoon? <laughs> because I believe in giving. You take care of the business of God. God will take care of your business. Can you say, Amen? Oh, brothers and sisters, how did we get into this church with zero down? I'll tell you how. Because whenever we moved over here, Sister Miranda and I. And some of you already know this anyway. And that's okay. God just did it. But we said, you know what? What we're going to do is for the for the three years that we have to lease this property, we're going to donate $1,000 every month of our salary towards the savings account. So after three years, we'll have $36,000 and we'll be able to just use that for the church as a down payment to purchase this property. We saved up like... We did that for three months, maybe four months. Four thousand dollars. We didn't even think about it. We're just wanting to be able to buy this building. Say, so why was it so important? Well, we already invested a lot of money to fix this building up too. <laughs> but we knew God was going to do something. He honors faith. Hello. He honors faith. Well, after just a few months, the Free Will Baptist called us. And they said, you know what? We're flying in from Tennessee, and we just want to see the church. And Brother Harrison, Brother Ray knows him. He called me. He said, Brother William, I'm not telling you exactly why they're coming down, but I'm going to give you some advice. <laughs> I said, go ahead. He said, I want you to have your church there when he comes. Okay. He said, I want you to tell them your vision, tell them your mission, tell them, uh, you know, uh, how you want this building and and he goes and then just turn the service over to us hey dude you don't know this building you tell me exactly what to do i'll do that <laughs> sure enough immediately following that meeting we went into that back room with the deacon board we talked things over and said all right we don't need anything down we don't need this we don't need that we just see the we need three months of your bank statements to know your church has money coming in sign the thing and then we'll be done with this thing. Praise the Lord. Sure enough it wasn't a couple weeks later we signed to where New Hope Church owns this property. We did it with zero down without a banker, without a realtor, without a down payment, without escrow, without anything. God did it all because we were faithful in giving unto the work of God. Amen. Can you lift up your hands and say, Lord, I want to be an unsung hero. Paul said, how will they hear without a preacher and how will the preacher get to them unless he is sent? Amen. This church is important. Come on, do you believe that? I hope so. I wouldn't attend here if I didn't think it was important. One of my favorite shirts, we made it during the COVID lockdowns. Wayne's got it on right now. Stand up and turn around, Wayne. Wayne's got to model it. What's it say? My church is essential. <laughs> Remember they were saying only essential businesses can be open. Oh, my church is essential. <laughs> my church is essential. Why is your church so essential? Well, because in my church, I get to learn about Jesus. I get to hear about Jesus. I get to worship Jesus. I get to make a difference in the lives of my brothers and sisters. I get to make a difference in the lives of these children. I get to make a difference in the lives of this community. This church is being used to depopulate hell and to populate heaven. This church is here to pull people out of the fires of hell and to set them on the street and near a road that leads to a land called heaven. That's why I give. I don't give to get. I give because I love God and I want to support His work. So next time you turn the TV on and they're begging 
for your money. If it's a solid biblical message and they live a life that is righteous before God, support it. Hello. Support it. But if their doctrine's wrong, you know what you're doing? You're wasting your money. Hello. Well, I give them the money. It's whatever they do with it. That's them. No, no, no. The Bible says that we need to be as wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove. Because if they get Jesus wrong, it doesn't matter what they get right. Amen. Say, Amen. Thank God for unsung heroes. Some plant, some water. God gives the increase. Number three tonight. I want to tell you that unsung heroes make a difference in prayer. Come on, church. Unsung heroes make a difference in prayer. Last year, Pastor Richard Hill was giving me a tour of his church. Oh, it was a beautiful building. He said, Pastor William, here is our nursery. Here are our classrooms. Here's the bathrooms. Here's the upstairs. Then we went from the upstairs to this little hallway or something into the sanctuary and just a beautiful facility that Pastor Hill's church had whenever they were over here on Wilson here in Aldell. And I thought that was the church tour. Then Pastor Hill said, but Brother William, there's one more room I want to show you. I said, okay. We walked in there and there were some church pews up against the walls. And Pastor Hill said, Brother William, this is the engine of our church. I said, the engine? He said, yes. This is where different people will come and gather together and seek the face of God before each service. This was over a year ago. <laughs> Pastor Hill said, this is where miracles are born. Amen. This is where we ask the Lord to pour out His Spirit and to move throughout the worship and the preaching. He said, this is the most important room in this entire property. Amen. Pastor Hill knew this is where the unsung heroes go to pray. See, a lot of times you may just think, oh, Pastor preached up a storm today. Man, he was preaching. He was kicking. He was shouting. Maybe you don't realize it was somebody that was praying for me, though. Come on. Maybe you, man, how, how did this happen? How did that happen? Man, what a wonderful service we had. God was moving. God was doing this. What you may not realize is that there were a couple of unsung heroes before the service praying the power of God down. Can you say amen? Unsung heroes make a difference in prayer. I believe it was uh, Charles Spurgeon, the old preacher, before he would go to a town, he would send an associate minister of his who was a prayer warrior. How many of you know of some prayer warriors? I tell you, we could use a lot more in this day and age. But he would send forth a prayer warrior to go before he would even get to... Say, for example, I'll just use a generic town. Say he's preaching and he's coming to Bakersfield. We'll just say, Spurgeon's coming to Bakersfield. Well, a few weeks before Spurgeon would come, he would send his buddy. He would begin to pray. Seek the face of God. Oh, Lord, whenever Mr. Spurgeon gets here, God, anoint him to preach. He began to tear down those strongholds through prayer. He began to break down those and spoil and foil all those schemes of the enemy. I found myself doing that lately. Whenever I wake up in the morning, I just say, Lord, right now, I just disassemble every every scheme that the enemy has planned for this day, every scheme he has against my children children, against my church, against my marriage, every trap he has, I break it in pieces now. You know what I'm doing? I'm preparing for the day. Amen. I'm making a difference through prayer. Amen. The Lord told us on Sunday morning that we must be persistent in our prayer. Amen. Oh yes. So Brother Hill, he said, this is the most important room in all of our church. I just kind of hid it in my heart and just kind of thought about it and just kind of moved on. But then a, about a month ago, the Lord dealt with me. He said, 
I want you to dedicate more time to prayer as far as a church. I said, okay. We went to a, a, a board meeting and we were uh, having lunch. And Brother Tom, they're not here tonight. I'd be praying for Sister Mariah. She's got a really bad infection in her tooth and her face has been swollen. I'd be praying for her. But uh, he said, Pastor, I've been having on my mind we need to get like a prayer box or something. And certain people's needs, if they don't want to maybe mention it before the church, they can just drop it in there. So Brother Tom, I think that's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. And I said, you know what? While we're on the subject of prayer, I said, the Lord spoke to me about a month ago, that, or a few weeks ago at that time, about spending more time in prayer. I said a lot of times we get to church and we're fellowshipping. I believe churches need fellowship. Hello. And I've also been in churches where as soon as you walk in, everybody's in the front and everybody's praying. Listen, that's great. That's wonderful. But I've seen more people that want to pray in church, but they don't ever pray outside the doors too. Come on. I've known the ministers that say, you know, I better get a hold of God now because I'm supposed to preach pretty soon. Come on. Jesus said, whenever you pray, do it in secret. Come on. Go to your closet, amen, and pray to your Father in secret. Don't pray to be seen of men. You know, sometimes like, oh, oh, oh. Hey, I believe in travailing. Hello, somebody. Come on, church. I believe in praying. I believe in seeking God. But if the only time we ever do that is here, that's a show. Amen. Come on. If the only time I ever speak in tongues is when I'm in church, that ain't nothing but a show to me. But come on, church. Get quiet on me now. Amen. Oh, I'll tell you, if we're going to live in here, we better live it outside of there. If I'm going to preach it here, I better live it outside there. If I'm going to teach it in here, I better teach it outside there. Amen. Can you say amen tonight? All oh, brothers and sisters. So we got a little prayer room. Amen. In the back. For unsung heroes to gather and to seek the face of God before the service. Amen. How many of you want to be an unsung hero? Amen. Uh, people may not see me though. That's okay. Your father sees you. Right. Come on, your father sees you. Yes, amen. He is the only one that matters. Amen. Have you ever did something before? And you thought to yourself, nobody noticed what I did. Come on. Me and Suzette, that's it. <laughs> Y'all are more sanctified than us. <laughs> there we go. Come on, we're going to be honest now. Nobody even said thank you. Did they see how I held that door open for them? <laughs> Next time I'm going to let them slam on them. <laughs> Come on. Did Pastor see how I went above and beyond? He didn't even notice it. Were you doing it for me? Or were you doing it for him? Come on. Let me ask you a question. Why do you preach? Why do you teach? Why do you evangelize? Is it to be seen of men? Or do you do it because you love your Father? I'll close with this. Facebook. There's a lot of good on there. And there's a lot of dumb on there.
the Lord, you saw it. The other day, I'll tell you, I'm, our kids are unsung heroes. We get, and I, prom, I said I'll close, I promise I'll close with this, okay? We got some little kittens out here. That's what I was thinking, too. Oh. <laughs> they keep mice away? Praise God. Keep rats away? Mary's like, praise the Lord. <laughs> but they also don't have a litter box, so they just kind of go everywhere. So I come in here to study and to pray, and I'm just like, oh, Lord, I love you. And I'm like, <laughs> Lord, I love you. Something ain't sitting right there, baby. <laughs> Look on my shoe. I don't see nothing. I keep going. Must be the devil. You know. I keep on praying. Next thing I know, I'm just like, okay. I stepped and I brought it in somewhere. I take my shoes off and it was right in the back where I couldn't see it. Oh. So I told Nathan, I said, Nate, here's your job, son. Get a shovel. Pick up all the little hoops that are laying around the church so nobody else steps in it. Yes, Dad. <laughs> Hey, he's an unsung hero. Amen. Amen. It may be nothing to us, but it's something to the Lord. If it matters to you, it matters to God. Amen. Can we all stand tonight?